Hey there! By now I'm sure you've seen an awful lot of maps just like this showing you the numbers of for COVID-19 and things like how many cases there are. Well, I wanted to share my perspective on what you should be looking for when you're trying to consume this data um, to help people avoid the panic and also help understand how data can be useful though. So when I look at this map, what you'll see down here, I've got it colored by the total number of cases. And so if you see a map like this, you see China jump way off the map in terms of color. And you see something like the United States so low. And if I were focusing on total number of cases, I could tell you, geez, the rest of the world is fine. China's in really bad shape. Italy's in pretty bad shape. And you've heard an awful lot of talk about those two countries for sure. Well, let's take a look at a few other things though that would be interesting as we look at all of the countries around the world that have any kind of reporting done you can see that china in fact has almost 81,000 cases italy is right behind with 31,000 cases as i scroll down you'll notice that diamond princess the cruise ship has 712 cases now where they've documented it after having tested cases of COVID-19. More than the entire country of Malaysia, more than the entire country of Canada, more than the entire country of Australia. Those kind of numbers are important to understand when we talk about social distancing, how fast this stuff can spread. When you are in closed quarters and you think you might be taking some good measures, but in fact, you're not. You you need to understand how this virus spreads and by the time they got the understanding on that boat this had already spread to this many people and within two weeks time frame you can see those numbers. Well the total numbers are one way to look at that for sure. We want to we want to track totals but when you think about the size of countries and their population Maybe totals aren't, a good, aren't the right comparison at all. Maybe what I'd really rather look at is cases based on the numbers per 1 million population. Right? Yes, China has 81,000 almost cases and Italy has almost 31,000 cases. And if I look at numbers, Italy looks, ah, they're in better shape than China is for sure. But when you look at the population, well, that's a different thing. If I want to went ahead and did something like this I could see hmm San Marino which happens to be in Italy only has 119 cases but folks that's one that's 3,507 cases proportionally for 1 million population the Vatican has has only one case um, but you can see that'd be one for 1,000 1,248 cases per 1 million people if you were to correlate that. So if I come back and I look at these large cities, right, let's go ahead and take some of these largest countries, look at them based on numbers, and then let's color that map based on cases per million, how many appropriately would be. Well, then we can see, gosh, Italy is really kind of in bad shape. It's worse than what the numbers might lead you to believe. Per million people, that's 521 cases per million, whereas China's only at 56 cases per million. And then we can see some countries that you may not have heard about yet, like Norway here, because they're at 271 cases per million. And so if I go ahead and sort this list by those cases, we can see that Italy and Switzerland, who you've heard nothing about, has an awful lot of cases per million. And Nor Norway that we just mentioned, Spain has a lot of cases, Iran has a lot of cases, Denmark has a lot of cases per million. And we might focus and say, well, geez, the U.S. is only at 20 known cases per million population. Fantastic. Nothing to worry about. Go to the movies just like you planned. Well, unless you start wondering, well, how did we document cases? 
right? And, and sometimes when we look at numbers and the media presents numbers to us or your, your friends share a website with you, you don't necessarily understand how the numbers are collected. They can only report what has been tested for. Many countries, just like the U.S., are in, in dire straits to get access to tests and be able to run the test. It's a matter of having not only the test kits, it's a matter of having the, the people who are able to mobilize to do the testing, um, which is coming for the U.S., but it's also a matter of having the equipment then to take those tests and actually do something with and get them back within a two-week time frame. Right? If, if it's going to take three weeks because tests are so far behind because I don't have the equipment to actually complete the test with, well, the tests do me no good. Right? Different countries around the world are in different shape for that. There are some countries um, like South Korea and China who are going out um, and actually testing people um, proactively. They're not waiting for symptoms to show up. They're, they're testing areas of people um, and that's why some of the numbers in certain areas are, are coming back higher for some countries. Well, this is fantastic. I'm able to analyze data after it's already happened. That's phenomenal. You've always wanted to be a statistic. Add that to your list, your bucket list. I'd like to visit this place. I'd like to see that. And I want to be counted as a statistic after the fact. That's called historical analytics. One other thing that I think we could use to visualize is what we call social determinants of health. There, there are things that are measured um, and tracked. Um, and this particular data set I'm going to show you is actually from the CDC, the Center for Disease Control, and they've looked at some of these social vulnerability indicators so that they could map an area like, hey, let's map um, this area, California, by zip codes and show me where we have the highest percentage of people that are over 65. Well, gosh, those are the vulnerable people, right, for this disease. That's exactly why we have these indicators captured and we have that data, right? Um, because then we can start, now we can start overlaying this type of map with where is the disease at right now. If I needed to focus my efforts on testing and prevention and getting masks and getting equipment um, respiratory equipment to different hospitals do you think I need to focus on these areas that don't have a whole lot of elderly or do you think I would need to focus on this region right here and perhaps that region right there where I need to get more equipment to those specific areas and do tests well of course I'd want to focus there well, we know that this, we, we're talking about social distancing and we want people to not be hanging around other people. What if, what if I wanted to map, well, geez, where on this map are the areas that have multi-unit housing, right? Apartment complexes, a lot of duplexes near each other. Well, I can see that this area here really pops out at me. And there would be a lot of other areas if I were to zoom down into here. As I zoom into the city and the census tracts, you could find, gosh, these are the areas with massive amount of people living together, walking past each other in the hallways of the apartment complex, touching mailboxes together, yada, 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 right? Well that might be some areas that I need to focus on. Maybe, gosh, maybe I want to just focus on the largest population areas to begin with. Where do I have the most people um, that would be, that could spread faster in, right? And I want to focus on those. Or maybe I want to focus on um, other things like those who perhaps aren't insured where I need to mobilize a different set of equipment. I don't need to take scanners and collect insurance information. We're going to have to provide testing for free 
in those areas. These social vulnerability indicators that the CDC has, this is exactly why these things exist, folks. When you've seen me writing and you've heard me talking about social determinants of health before, this is exactly what these things exist for, situations like this. So as you're evaluating and you're seeing different mapping from other people, don't forget, there's other things that can be looked at to try to mobilize in one area versus I need to serve 350 million people. Oh my gosh, where are we going to go? Right? We don't necessarily have to overreact and, and worry about all 350 million right at first. If we have a limited amount of kits and we have a limited amount of healthcare resources um, to treat people, we need to focus on preventing it and serving the areas that we believe will likely be hardest hit first and then as we keep manufacturing more equipment and we keep manufacturing more test kits we can focus on those things so you're going to see an awful lot of maps from an awful lot of people be sure you understand how to analyze that data right don't just be fooled with one specific map that's showing you the total number of cases and like i i guess i don't have to worry about it be thinking about mm, why did they choose to show that number versus any one of hundreds of other values that are floating out there and also be thinking about the fact that the CDC has done a great job of preparing this social vulnerability indicator data set that those folks are using to overlay with these maps and try to track where should we focus on first Hope you all have a great day.